Hi, I'm Kristen Omdahl. I'm a creative entrepreneur embracing every aspect of life with artistic intention. Join me as I share the way I live and all the tips and tricks along the way. Allow me to inspire you to do the same. Please like, share, or comment on my videos. I'd love to hear from you. And if you subscribe to my channel, you'll be first to know when there's something new. Sprout Chain Shawlette is one of my most famous patterns and it comes from this book, Crochet So Fine. It's a very, very simple pattern of single crochet and chain seven spaces. You start at the top. It's begun at the top here and with a series of very simple increases, you work your way all the way down as you grow the size of the shawl and it ends with these beautiful little edging flowers that are all done seamlessly in one continuous piece of yarn. So however much yardage you have, you could make it in one piece if you need extra balls. Obviously you'd have ends to weave in from there. In today's video, I'm going to show you how simple this is to create. I'm using a worsted weight yarn and an H hook to show you on a larger yarn just because it's very easy to see on the camera then. I'm going to tie with a knot onto my crochet hook. You can use a slip knot if you prefer. I prefer a solid knot. And in this sample I'm using a ball of Be So Bold, my worsted weight hand painted bamboo yarn. You start with a chain 26. Okay, and then we're going to single crochet into the second chain from the hook. What that means is that we're not counting the loop on our hook, we're counting two chains from it. So that would be one and two. I'll lay it down on the white table so you can see even better. The loop on the hook does not count, that would be chain one and that would be chain two. So we're going to work into that second chain. You could either work into just the top loop only or into both See, there's three loops of a chain. You can either work into one only or into two. If you work into two, it's going to be a more firm connection. If you work into one, it'll be lacier. And it really doesn't matter which way you do it, as long as you decide to be consistent with whichever way you choose. I'm going to work into the more firm connection just because this is the foundation row of the shawl. But now that means that I'm committing to the rest of the shawl being worked that way as well. Um, so just keep that in mind when you choose which way you want to do it. If you are a tight crocheter, you're going to probably prefer just that top loop. And if you're a loose crocheter like me, it's much easier to get into both loops. So we're going to chain seven. And then we're going to skip seven chains and single crochet into the next chain. So I'm going to set that down so you can see where we're at. We did a single crochet into that chain, so now we're going to skip one two, three, four, five, six, seven, and single crochet into the next. Okay, then we're going to chain seven. I'm going to set our work down and look for how we, we're going to skip one, two, I'm going to turn the chain so it's all facing up. If you leave it twisted, you'll never be able to recognize one chain from the next. It's very important that you see them all looking the same way. Otherwise, you can very easily mistaken one chain for two or two for one. It gets confusing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we'll single crochet in the next. And just a recap of what single crochet is. I'm going to insert my hook into the chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops on my hook. I'm going to chain seven. And then we're going to skip seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and single crochet into the last chain. Okay, and that's what row one will look like now. Okay, we're ready for row two. We're going to chain one. Turn our work. 
we're going to single crochet into that first single crochet, chain two, and single crochet again in the same stitch. Then we're going to chain seven, and then in the next single, we're going to skip those seven chains, and in the next single crochet, we're going to work single cr crochet, chain two, single crochet in the same stitch. Then we're going to chain seven. We're going to skip the next seven chains. We're going to do a single crochet, chain two, single crochet in the next chain two space, or in the next single crochet. Chain seven. And then in the last single crochet at the end of the row, we're going to work a single crochet, chain two, and single crochet in the same stitch. I'm going to set the work down so you can see what that looks like. Okay, row two is complete. I'm going to pick up my work now, chain one, turn my work, single crochet in the first stitch, and we're going to chain three single crochet, skip chain two, and single crochet in the next single crochet, chain seven. We're going to skip the chain seven in the row below. We're going to single crochet in the next single crochet, chain three, single crochet in the next single crochet, chain seven, single crochet in the next single crochet, chain three, single crochet in the next single crochet, chain seven, single crochet in the next single crochet, chain three, and single crochet in the last single crochet. And I'll set my work down so you can see what that looks like. What we're doing is in the areas that we're growing, we're increasing by one chain in each of those, and we're keeping anything that started with a chain seven is maintaining a chain seven. So you could probably guess at this point that in between these spaces, we're going to go to a chain four this time. So it was a chain two, chain three, and now we're going to do a chain four, but maintain the chain seven. So let me show you what that means. We're going to chain one, turn our work, single crochet in the first stitch, or single crochet, chain four, skip the chain three, single crochet in the next single crochet, chain seven, single crochet in the next single crochet, chain four, single crochet in the next single crochet, chain seven, single crochet in the next single crochet, chain four, single crochet in the next single crochet, chain seven, single crochet in the next single crochet, chain four, and single crochet in the last stitch. Okay, I'll set our work down so you can see where we're at, see how it's starting to grow, it's starting to move outward because we're doing a top-down construction. We start small and then we grow all the way until we have that really long V-shaped triangle at the bottom for doing our edging. So that's the end of this row and you can easily guess now that in between these smaller sections it's going to be a chain five on the next row where these are going to maintain chain seven. So let me show you what I mean. Chain one, turn our work, single crochet in the first stitch, chain five, single crochet in the next single crochet, chain seven, single crochet in the next single crochet, chain five, single crochet in the next single crochet, chain seven, single crochet in the next single crochet, chain five, single crochet in the next single crochet, chain seven, single crochet 
chain seven, single crochet in the next single crochet, chain five, and single crochet in the last single crochet. Set our work down so you can see what that looks like. And now um, you can easily guess that these sections are going to now have a chain six space in them in the next row and these are going to maintain the chain seven. So let me show you what that looks like. We're chain one, turn our work, single crochet in the first stitch, chain six, single crochet in the next single crochet, chain seven, single crochet in the next single crochet, chain four, five, six. Sorry, I like to count the number out loud in my head. <laughs> I got this one I would say chain two, three, four, five, six, seven, single crochet, and then I would say chain two, three, four, five, six for the chain six. It's kind of like it reminds me of when I was in ballet or tap or jazz class when I was a little kid. It's the way we counted there and I've always kind of maintained it in the counting in my head. Little tidbit. <laughs> so we end with a chain six and single crochet into the top of the first stitch like that. Okay, and you can imagine that the very last one now for this repeat will be a chain seven in every space across the row. So I'll show you how to do that and then our first set of increases and the entire repeatable pattern will be complete. Uh, so we're going to chain one, turn our work, single crochet into the first single crochet, chain seven, and single crochet in the next single crochet. And that's what we're going to repeat across this entire row. The easiest row of all, right? <laughs> But now, in the following row, when you see how we repeat this, it's very interesting, and that's when you're going to start to recognize the pattern. Chain seven, single crochet in the next single crochet, chain seven. Single crochet in the next single crochet. chain seven single crochet and our final chain seven and single crochet. Okay, now to show you what we're going to be doing for our increases going forward. We're going to always maintain doing an increase section wedge on the sides, but we're also going to maintain doing an increase section down either side of the center, which means we used to have one chain seven in between each one of those increases, and now we're going to have three, and it's always going to go up in multiples of two. It went from one to three, it'll be five, seven, nine, eleven, and so on and so forth. So let me show you how we do this repeatable increase now. We're going to chain one, turn our work, and single crochet into the first stitch. We're going to chain two, single crochet into the same stitch, chain seven, and single crochet into the next single crochet. We're going to repeat this part three times now instead of one, so chain seven single crochet is repeated three times. That was once, this is twice, and this is three times. Okay, so now to do our wedge on either side of that center panel, we're going to chain two, single crochet in the same stitch, chain seven, single crochet, chain two, single crochet in the same stitch, and now we're going to repeat our chain seven, single crochet in the next stitch three times, chain seven, single crochet once. chain seven, single crochet twice, chain seven, single crochet three times, and we'll finish off with an additional chain two and single crochet 
into that same stitch for our final increase. So now I'll show you what this looks like. We set it down. We've got a new increase wedge here, a new in increase increase wedge here, and a new increase wedge here and here. We have three solid chain sevens here. We have one solid chain seven here, and we have one, two, three solid chain sevens here with those four increases. So I'll show you how we start the next row where we're going to put chain three in those chain two space increase sections. So we're going to start with a chain one, single crochet in the first stitch, chain three, single crochet in the next single crochet, chain seven, single crochet, chain seven, single crochet, chain seven, single crochet. Now we have an increase wedge here, so we're going to go to a chain three, single crochet in the next single crochet. We're in our center panel, so we'll do a chain seven again, single crochet in the next single crochet. We're in an increase, so we're going to do a chain three, single crochet in the next stitch, chain seven. We've got our three even pan panels of chain seven to do, so it's chain seven, single crochet one time, chain seven, single crochet for our second repeat, chain seven, and single crochet for our third repeat, and we'll finish off with a chain three, single crochet in the last stitch for our final fourth and final increase wedge in the row. And that's what it looks like now. I'll show you how we do the next row. We're going to chain one, single crochet in the same stitch, chain four, single crochet in the next stitch, chain seven, single crochet, and we'll repeat the chain seven single crochet three times. Chain four, single crochet in the next single, chain seven for our center column, chain four, single crochet, then we'll do a chain seven, single crochet, repeat that three times. Okay, so I think you're ready to follow along with what we've learned so far and do a little homework. What I'd like you to do is repeat exactly what I just did until we get to a row where we have all chain sevens in between each single crochet. So that way I'll show you how we do the increases one more time before we finish. So go ahead. Alright, our second repeat is complete now. So we have our first repeat was a wedge coming up on either side of the center panel and either side of the side and because we started with three repeats and then our second repeat now was to add an additional wedge on either side and on either side of the center and if you get confused while you're working you're not sure if you have all seven 
rows before you want to start, I'm sorry, all six. Because we start with a chain two and end with a chain seven, it's actually six row repeat. Um, in case you're not sure whether or not you have all seven and you're having trouble counting your chains, real easy way to check it is that see how this is the row where we started our new wedge? We started a new chain or chain two in there, so you would count one, two, three, four, five, six, or the chain two row, the chain three row, the chain four row, the chain five, chain six, and chain seven. Then you can be sure that you've completed your repeat and you're ready to move on to the next repeat. So just to follow up with you conceptually, what we're doing now is we're going to start a single crochet, chain two, single crochet, increase, repeat on either side here and on either side of this center panel here, which would be right here and right here. If it helps, you could use stitch markers to mark your place, or if you feel comfortable counting, what that's going to mean is that we went from one repeat to three, and now we'll be at five repeats of single crochet chain seven in between our increases. And I'll show you how to do that first row right now. We're going to chain one, single crochet into the first stitch, chain two, single crochet in the same stitch, which is a new increase repeat started, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going to chain seven, single crochet in the next stitch for a total of five times, two, three, four, five, and if you want to just double check to make sure you're in the right space, if you weren't using stitch markers, you want to make sure you're at the beginning of that center panel of chain seven spaces. So we're going to chain two and single crochet in the same stitch, work our chain seven for the center, single crochet in the next stitch, chain two, single crochet in the same stitch, and then we're going to chain seven and single crochet in the next stitch for a total of five times, two, three, Four, five, chain two, and single crochet in the same stitch. So now we've started our third section of our pattern of increases. So we had our wedge here, then we had our wedge here, and now we're starting our third set of increases, the wedge here, and you can see it here. We started with one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, and now we're starting a third one here. And I'll show you on the actual shawl, a, a sample of the finished shawl, where you can actually see that very well. See how we're going to be continuing to add wedges as we go along the side and along either side of the center panel and then along the side here. And you're going to keep doing that until you reach the length that you desire. Now, based on the yarn you use, I've done it in fingering weight, I've done it in sport weight, and now I'm doing one in worsted weight here. It's beautiful in all of them. It's pretty in gradient. It's pretty in the variegated colorway, too. I really like this. So it's going to depend on the type of yardage and how much yarn you, you want to use and what size shawl you want to finish off at. All of that I suggest is that you follow this established pattern, and then whenever you're close to being done with your size, however many yards that may be, you're going to want to do this edging row, and you want to do it on a row that's only chain seven spaces, so at the end of a repeat. So let me show you how to do that on our swatch now. All right, so at this point, I would be at the equivalent of the end of a repeat where it's only chain seven spaces all the way across. So this is the point where you want to be, regardless of what length your shawl is, this is where you want to be to start the uh, edging row. And what's amazing is that those beautiful flowers and dangles are all done in one piece in one row. So we're going to chain one, single crochet into our first stitch, 
and you're going to chain 15. Okay, then we're going to chain, slip stitch into the fifth chain from our hook. And remember from the beginning, we don't count the loop on our hook. We're going to count back one, two, three, four, five into this chain here. And depending on whether you feel more comfortable working through one loop of the chain or two, just remember to be consistent. So we slip stitch into the fifth chain from the ring, to, from the hook to form a ring. We're going to chain three, double crochet in the ring. chain three, slip stitch in the ring. And we're going to repeat that. Chain three, double crochet in the ring, chain three, slip stitch in the ring. Okay, I'm going to do that really slowly and count out exactly what I'm doing. Chain three, yarn over your hook, insert your hook in the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's the double crochet. Chain three, and then we're going to slip stitch in the ring. So we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through the ring and the loop on our hook. See how I kind of twist my hook to uh, create a slip stitch without doing any other loops? And we're going to chain three again, double crochet in the ring, chain three, slip stitch in the ring, chain three, Actually, with this yarn, I think I like four petals better. The um, pattern in the book calls for five. This one I like four, and I think I did four on this one as well. So you can choose however many you want to do. You could do three petals, four petals, five petals, whichever you see works best with the yarn that you choose. So I'm going to do four for this one. Lucky four leaf clover, I guess. And we're going to chain five now. And we're going to slip stitch into the fifth of this chain 10 space. Now what I find is when you're working into a chain like this, and it's a little bit twisted, you want to try and get it untwisted as much as possible, but it's very difficult to figure out where the first chain is for counting. So I count back from here. I'm going to count back one, two, three, four, five, because we wanted to slip stitch into the fifth chain from the ring. I know there are 10 remaining. If I count back five, I can find my space better. So one, two, three, four, five. So that means the sixth would be the fifth from the other end. So we'll slip stitch into that chain and then we're going to chain five. And now we'll come back down to our ending row of the shawl and we're going to slip stitch our single crochet into the next single crochet. I'm going to set that down so you can see what we've done. We started with a chain 15 slip stitch into the fifth chain from the hook to create a ring. Then we did a chain three, double crochet, chain three, slip stitch four times to create four petals, then chain five, then we slip stitched into the middle of the ten chains remaining or the fifth chain from where we were at or the sixth chain up from the uh, beginning. And then we did a chain five and single crochet in the next stitch. I'll show you that one more time. We're going to start with a chain 15. slip stitch into the fifth chain from your hook, chain three, we're going to double crochet in the ring, chain three, slip stitch in the ring, chain three, double crochet in the ring, whoops, double crochet in the ring, chain three, slip stitch in the ring, and you do that for a total of four times. chain three, single or double crochet, chain three, slip stitch in the ring, chain five. You want to slip stitch into the fifth chain from where we're at. If you're having trouble counting it, count back up from the beginning. Slip stitch and then we're going to chain five and single crochet into the next stitch. And that's exactly what you're going to So it doesn't really matter how many repeats you have, no matter how big you make your shawl or how little you make your shawl or shawlette, you're going to work this over however many number of chain seven single crochet repeats you have at the end of your shawl. 
you're going to create these beautiful dangly flowers all in one continuous piece along the shawl. Follow the links on the screen for more information about the yarn I used today, the yarn I used in this other shawl, or even for more information about the book Crochet So Fine. If you're looking for just this particular pattern, there's a link on the screen now to download it for free.